Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. Thank God the greater one is inside of us, and what men have said is impossible with God is possible. And with those that believe. All things, Jesus said, are possible to those who believe. That means the thing that you thought could never be fixed. It can be fixed. It can be fixed. If we will quit doubting and quit questioning accusatively and all this stuff and start believing and allow our hearts to be fully persuaded, like Abraham, that what God said he is well able to perform. Get your Bible and something to make a note with and come on into the class and, and let's receive what he has for us today. Father, we thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for allowing us to be your children and putting us into your kingdom, giving us access and, and the rights to the blessings in Christ. Uh, that which we need to see revealed to us, we pray and remind us of, and how to put it into action. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Would you look in our great textbook again today in Mark 7, continuing in studying the healing of the Syrophoenician's uh, daughter. It's recorded in Matthew 15, and we've looked there a few times, and also here in Mark 7. So let's read Mark's account of it today in Mark 7 and 24. It said, From thence he arose, Jesus arose, and went into the borders of Tyre and Zidon, and entered into an house, and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman, whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, Let the children first be filled, for it's not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. So we had seen already that uh, Jesus' response to this woman is markedly different from his response to the nobleman and the ruler of the synagogue and the leper and the others that we, we saw. Uh, none of those do we see him just not answering them or telling them that he wasn't sent to them. This is very different. And we've seen from our study why. It's because she's not a Jewish proselyte uh, because elsewise, the Lord wouldn't say to her, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to dogs because she would be a ch one of the children. So obviously she was not. She's outside the covenant of God and had not necessarily come to begin to follow God and put her faith in God, but perhaps using a borrowed phrase she heard somebody else using, just come to get a healing and then go back to their ungodly lifestyle, worshiping idols even. And so uh, uh, she got a very different response. And so he said, uh, verse 27, let the children first be filled. For it's not meat or fit to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Now the word dog is used more than once here. And it's the word, the Greek word for little dog. And... Uh, obviously, it refers to a dog that's small enough to be under the table. <laughs> so uh, what he's saying is, you don't take the food that's prepared for the children and give it to the dog. And this, is, this wasn't made for the dog. This is made for the children. This belongs to the children. Now, what we know is that even if dog owners have, you know, a rule about the dog not eating at the table or the dog not eating people food, uh, it's possible <laughs> that the dog could get some of the children's food. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. Even though the dog doesn't have a right to eat at the table. The dog is not one of the children. The dog uh, should not have the food that's meant for the child. Yet, it's possible just out of mercy <laughs> that somebody at the table could give Fido something <laughs> that was actually children's food. That's what happened in this situation. That's exactly what happened. The woman didn't have a right. She wasn't one of the children. She didn't have covenant access, but even, and that's what she said. That's why this is in the book. You know, let's just back up here. I, I just now saw this. When she fell down and worshiped and said, Lord, help me. That's when the Spirit of God gave her the response. Can you see that? How would she think of that? How, why? Because the Lord says here, for this saying, the demon has gone out of your daughter. Because of what you just said. How'd she come up with this? Somebody said, that's brilliant. That's amazing. Yeah, she didn't think it up. <laughs> this is in response to her falling down and worshiping the master saying, Lord, help me. Because she didn't know what to do. And in the current situation, there's no ministry headed her way. Can you see that? And yet when he says, well, it, you're not, it's not right to take what belongs to the children, the children's bread, and give it to the dogs. Yet she just, it just came right out of her. She said, truth, Lord. She's not arguing with him. She's not going to contradict. You're right, you're right. But, you know, even the little dogs get the crumbs that, that fall from the children's uh, table. And I, I believe a big smile broke across the master's face. Don't you? I believe he's like... We can work with this. I mean, it's, right? He's in communion with the Father, right? And so he said, I only say what I, I hear the Father say. I only do what I see him do. Well, who gave this woman this, this response? Where'd she get that? She had no idea what she's saying, how accurate it was in covenant. And think about another reason why he, he looked at her and he said, woman, Great is your faith. Great. What do you mean? We see it in her finding Jesus, in her hanging in there through everything. And also now she says, I'm going to paraphrase. She says, all I need is a few crumbs. <laughs> just, a, just a few. She has so much faith in this anointing and power and authority. She's thinking, I don't need a whole slice. I just... Just a few crumbs. You know, puppies get the crumbs, right? I mean, the crumbs. <laughs> my, my wife tells me at home, we, we got two little dogs. And, and once in a while, if, if, I, if something falls off the table or something, and boy, my, the little dog, he, he's named Bubby. He, he's on it. And, and I'm like, Bubby, what are you doing in here? And Phyllis says, he's got scriptures. He's got scripture. You know what I mean? He's got, <laughs> he's got scripture to get it. Well, how you argue with that? Is that right? That's exactly what happened. But what kind of faith did this woman have? And it's not because of her years and years studying the law or any of that. It was just a choice. She heard about this. She saw some results of it. She thought, this is the real deal. right? I believe in this. And she said, I, I just crumbs. If I could just get some crumbs. Man, think about the power of the anointing of God. Just a few crumbs delivered her daughter and healed her daughter, I don't know, 150 miles away? Instantly. Can, can you see that? What would a whole slice do for you? Huh? Well, I mean, if a few crumbs will do that, what would a half a loaf do for you? He does prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Jesus said, I am the living bread. I am the bread that came down from heaven. If a man eats of, of me, he'll have life eternal. He is the living bread. 
and his body is the bread and his body was broken. That's why in communion you're supposed to break it. Break it. Why? Not so we could be broken. He was broken so we could be whole. And he's given the children the whole loaf. Hallelujah. 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 And these are, this is a big loaf. <laughs> and she said, you know, how many would agree it had to be the Holy Spirit that gave her this response? Right? Had to be. Had to be. And I see that in a direct answer to her plea, Lord, help me. And man, the Spirit of God just gave her what to say. And, and she said it in such faith. Jesus said, let the children first be filled. For it's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she answered and said to him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The, Matthew says, truth, Lord. Truth, Lord. Is she still humbling herself? Is she acknowledging that she is in the presence of greatness? Hmm? She, is in the pre- she believed before she left the house that she could get help for her daughter here. And she wouldn't let anything deter her or cause her to get offended or cause her to leave. Friend, even when the Lord sends you to a church, and you can tell it when you're connected to fellow believers, uh, ministry that feeds your spirit and helps you, man, you can tell it. Uh, this, is, this is what I've been looking for. This is what I need. Well, you need to understand the enemy will immediately try to sever you from that. Mm-hmm. He will immediately, he will do whatever he can to get you upset with somebody, offended, hurt, mad, so that you sever that connection and cut off that supply that you so need. But you got to be like this woman. You got to make up your mind. No, I know my answer is here. I know it is, and nobody's going to run me off, right? And and not just being belligerent and being haughty about it or defiant. I'm not, that's the absolute wrong thing. Humbling yourself and saying, hey, teach me, show me, I'll change. I'll make a change, right? And when it gets real serious and you don't even know what to do, Lord, help me, Right? And how many believe just like this woman, if you pray that kind of prayer and worship like that sincerely, the next thing will happen. It'll come right up in you what to say and what to do. You'll know what to do. And it will be the thing that will change your situation. He said, uh, yes, Lord, yet the dogs, and that's the Greek for little dogs, under the table eat of the children's crumbs. I know Jesus smiled when he heard it. I just know it. I can just see him thinking, we got this. Right? We got this. Because before that, why didn't he respond? Why did he, he only says what he hears the Father say. He said, I can do nothing of myself. And so he's dependent, relying on the Holy Spirit and his communion with the Father. And when he hears this, he knows where she got this. Right? He recognizes the Holy Spirit when he hears it. And he smiles and he goes, For this saying, so it was directly connected to the words she just said in verse 28. Yes, Lord, yet the dogs, little dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. For this saying, go your way, the demon is gone out of your daughter. I mean right then. Nobody had to go pray for her or lay hands on her. Come on, can you see this? Nothing had to be discerned or even cast out. And we know it was a spirit. And yet, there there are many ways deliverance can be affected. But uh, you remember when Paul, in the book of Acts, it said they were brought from his body handkerchiefs or aprons that had contacted his body. And when they came in contact with the sick or the oppressed, it said the uh, evil spirits went out of them and they were healed of, of diseases. Same thing. Without, and this was re- remote, if you will. Um, the same anointing that drove out the spirit healed her body. Same thing at the same time. And people can be delivered just by being in the presence of God. Just by being in a service or in a place where the Spirit of God is manifested and the anointing is is, is flowing, uh, 
if people will yield to that, the, the evil stuff can't hang around. <laughs> they just, it has to leave. It, just can't, it can't function around the glory of God. It, and it, you'll see people that don't want to turn loose of it. They get so agitated, they want to leave. They just want to leave the building, leave the place and get away because they're trying to hold on to it. That's the big mistake. They should receive the glory and let it push all the junk out. And at the same time that evil influences have to leave, then the effects of these evil influences are corrected by the anointing, healed, restored by the anointing. Can you see this? Her daughter was made whole. Hallelujah. When she was come to her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let me, let me read this to you from the, uh, the Weiss translation. He said to her, let first the children be fed. For it's not right to take the bread of the children and throw it to the little pet dogs. But she answered and says to him, yes, sir. Yet the little pet dogs under the table are constantly eating from the little morsels of the little children. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, yeah. And he said to her, because of this word, be going. The demon is gone out of your daughter. We should not fear these evil influences. They, they cannot stand up against the anointing and power of God. They cannot resist the power and authority in the name of Jesus. They can only function in the absence of of God's presence, in the absence of somebody yielding to the Spirit of God. Uh, we should never have any fear of these things. What we should do is listen to the Holy Spirit, and when He says, don't go there, then don't go there. Don't be involved in that, then don't be involved in that. Don't feed on that. We should listen to Him, because He's endeavoring to protect us. And we should feed on His good things, filling us with faith, pushing out the other stuff. He said, because of this word, be going. The demon is gone out of your daughter. And having gone off into her home, he found the little child lying quietly upon her couch and the demon gone out, gone. This woman, when she, like we said, is like 150 miles away or something, depending on where it was. So, you know, it took her a while to get back. But when she walked in the house, she could sense a different environment. That, that awful, nasty, tormenting thing is gone. Hallelujah. She looks at her little girl, and she's not grievously vexed and tormented. She's all peaceful, laying on the couch. Healed. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is this still the will of God? Yes. Does faith still work today? Yes. And if a woman, ungodly woman, with no covenant, no rights, no access, if she can get a miracle and healing for her daughter, why not our child of God? Amen. The bread does belong to us. Is that right? We've been born again. We've been already placed into the kingdom of God. We do have a covenant with Him. Yes. Somebody say, I have a covenant with God. I, covenant with God. I am in covenant am in with the Almighty God. The Almighty God. And you know, what he, the, the Lord said, you know, the, the father in the parable about the prodigal son, he said, son, all I have is yours. And Paul talked about this in 1 Corinthians. He said, all things are are yours. And Peter said, you've, you've been given all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Uh, Paul said, you've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. What is it? This is covenant talk. Amen. Covenant. Healing is the children's bread. And the bread belongs to the children. That means healing is mine. Amen. Deliverance is my, I don't have to beg God for it. I don't have to try to talk him into it. He tells me from his perspective, it's a staple that you need every day, right? 
bread. You need bread. You need sustenance. You need staple. Somebody say it out loud. Uh, the, the healing, the healing is, mine. is mine. The, the bread, the bread belongs, to me. belongs to me. It belongs to me. Belongs Deliverance, to and healing Deliverance and healing belongs to me. Belongs to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It belongs to me. And what we need to do is just like the, the 23rd Psalm says, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my mine enemies. Well, that means the enemy is still around, but he can't keep me from partaking right. what's on the table. Yes. And I don't need to let be preoccupied. Some say, well, there's demons around here. Well, you're talking about the whole planet. I mean, there's, there's evil influences all over the place, but you don't have to let them inside your thinking and inside your life. You can keep them on the outside looking in. And even though they're around the outskirts of the table in the presence of my enemies, making noise and trying to distract. Somebody says, what is that? You say, I pay no attention to that. <laughs> Look at the table. I mean, there, the Lord knows how to put on the, the table. Look, look, look at this. Give me a scoop of that joy over there. Come, give me a scoop and a half. Uh, <laughs> give, give me some of that peace. Oh, yeah. But put peace all over that. And, 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 and another piece of bread, please. Amen. Does it belong to us? Yes. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is the bread that belongs to the children. And you are a child of God. I'm a child of God. Let's partake. Can you say amen? amen. Really, if people understood it, and we've talked about this in, in our churches for some time. Healing should be received every time we partake of communion. Because when you hold up the bread and, and the Lord said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And when you, when you break it and you take it to eat, you should say, I'm receiving all the benefits of the broken body of Christ. And you're doing it with a piece of Bread. Is that right? Yes. Bread, which is healing. And when you say, give us, Lord, this day our daily bread, you just said, give us this day our daily healing and our daily deliverance and help. You take it, you eat it. As, as you receive it into your body, you should receive by faith whatever it takes to nourish your body and change your body no matter what has happened in times past, God created the body. He can fix it. Somebody say, he can fix it. He can, he can fix it. I don't care what it is. He can fix it. It's already bought and paid for. And what you do, just like you reach out, you know, you can't wait for somebody to force feed you. Right? The old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Well, we could, we could shove a piece of bread in your mouth. But... That, we can't make you eat it, right? I mean, you could just sit there. Or, you could know, say, eat it, eat it. No, I don't, I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. Well, you're not going to benefit from it. It has to get in you to do some good. So you have to choose to receive it. You have to choose. And that's what Jesus said. Man shall not live by bread alone, natural bread, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Well, the same thing is true. He's not going to shove it down your throat and make you swallow it and receive it. You have to say, give me some of that. I'll, yes, I'll take it and, and take it into your ears and take it into your mind and chew it until you swallow it and it becomes part of you. Can you say amen? amen. He said, uh, because of this saying, because of those words, that the Spirit of God gave you, uh, the demon is gone out of your daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter laid upon the bed. I want you to pray a prayer right now with me. Say it out loud. Father God, Father God I, believe I believe in you. I humble myself, I humble myself under, your hand, under your mighty hand. And I say you are right. I say truth, Lord. 
yes, Lord, yes, Lord. To, everything to everything you say. I'm willing to change. I'm willing to change. Help, me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. Show me, Show me. Any, adjustments, any adjustments, any changes, any changes. And, I and I receive the children's bread. The children's bread. I, receive I receive healing anointing. Healing anointing. I, receive I receive delivering power. I receive it from you, O God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's it. Our time is up again today. Say it like we do so often. I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith giving glory to God. Well, there's a lot more cases for us to look at. Come back again with us next week. We'll see you soon here in Faith School. I've really enjoyed being with you again this week. I can sense that our faith is rising. It's getting stronger. It's coming up. I know many of you are partners with us. Uh, if you're not a partner, the information is on the screen there. You can find out more about it. But because of your partnership, uh, we're able to send this broadcast all over the place at no cost to the recipients. Remember that the scripture said, Jesus said, um, don't be like the Gentiles that you know, are always worrying about what they're going to eat, drink, and, and wear. Your Father knows you have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Just like that woman fell down and said, Lord, help me, then He gave her what she needed to, to bridge to get to that physical need met. That same thing can happen for you financially. Sit out loud with me, Father, Lord, help me. Show me what to do in my finances. Show me how to seek your kingdom first. Hallelujah. If you mean business with that, just like he immediately gave that woman what to say and do, and that was her breakthrough, he'll give you what to say and do, and your needs will be met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Our time's up today, but come back next week, and let's feed our faith some more here at Faith School. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today. But you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.